I think up next is Eloise. I just uh, had the opportunity to spend a few minutes with Eloise uh, a little while ago, and uh, I was struck uh, immediately by uh, the level of knowledge and experience she's kind of already built into uh, her passion, which we share, it sounds like, for, for safe water and the work that she's doing in Kenya. And uh, that, that was very striking to me to see. I think there's, there's far more wisdom in some of the things that uh, you were talking to me about than I ever had at your age, for sure. <laughs> so that's, you're on, the, uh, on a really good track. I think uh, the, the, there's also a really good bonding because we're both engineers, although uh, she took it a step further and not only did a biomedical engineering degree, but also did an MBA, both at Oxford, correct? Uh, and then has immediately struck out for Kenya and is doing some work with water uh, wells there. And I thought interesting blending some technology and data into monitoring the, the level of groundwater, which is going to be absolutely critical for the planet going forward as we see groundwater depletion lots of places around the world. So I think you're going to give us a little bit more insight on that right now, right, Heloise? Thanks. Fellow delegates, distinguished guests, I would like to invite you to come on a journey with me to East Africa. In Northwest Kenya, the Takana County is known as one of the most arid parts of the world. Scorching temperatures burn the earth and suck out all the moisture. This year alone, farmers lost so much livestock, the World Bank gave them $65 million worth of compensation for losses experienced during dry spells. More than 1.6 million people in arid and semi-arid parts of Kenya are plagued by famine, thirst, and poverty. But hope was not lost for the Turkana tribe. In 2013, just a few meters below their feet, a geological survey team found water flowing in an aquifer large enough to sustain the entire country's 41 million people for the next 70 years. But what happens then? If people start digging wells without proper management, it's very much like driving a car without knowing how much fuel you have left in the tank. It's difficult to measure what we can't see, and it's near impossible to manage what we don't measure. This is why our small team at Oxford developed a smart pump monitoring system using the near 100,000 hand pumps across East Africa to measure, monitor, and manage shallow groundwater. By retrofitting a simple and inexpensive device in a standard pump handle, we were able to proactively monitor the condition of a pump and thereby ensure that millions of people can have access to a reliable water source. The hand pump remains the most reliable and robust method to access groundwater, making it the cornerstone of rural water supply in sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. However, only two-thirds of these pumps work at any given time and often can remain broken for up to 27 days. A single broken hand pump forces nearly 1,000 people from remote villages to walk between 5 and 20 kilometers to the nearest fresh water source. The alternative? To drink contaminated water. This leaves communities vulnerable to the many waterborne diseases that, is, that are is associated with sharing wells and surface water with livestock and other animals. The next step for us is to deploy a further 50,000 of these smart pumps in Kenya, Ethiopia, and Bangladesh that will serve nearly 5 million more people. In partnership with UNICEF and local governments, we hope to use the data gathered from these pumps to build a groundwater risk management tool. At scale, this would enable the hand pump infrastructure across the entire sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia to be transformed into a low-cost, distributed groundwater monitoring network, often in areas where data is currently sparse. The need for these data are becoming even more important in the face of climate change. Groundwater may have a key role to play 
as a buffer against changes in precipitation and surface water flows. One Young World community, as a generation, I urge you to start thinking differently about the ways in which we can use technology, and especially low-cost technology, and consciously apply the power of big data to meet the needs of those people living below the poverty line. And as water becomes even more scarce, perhaps even in our own communities, water is the nexus for life. It is the first thing that astronomers look for when they search for life outside our planet. And it is the last thing that the Kana tribe think about when they go to sleep at night. Thank you.